In this Launchbox Grasshopper tutorial, I want to show you how you can make a space frame based on a surface and a flat surface. As you can see, I can update this surface and uh, by, by using Launchbox, I can produce a new space frame again. So I can move this point down and you can see that it's going to update the results. So basically what we want to do is to define a surface and by changing the surface we're going to get new results and we're also going to work with the details as you can see we can define the pipes and the connections and the knots so we're going to start that from scratch in grasshopper using launchbox to start this from scratch what i want to do is to produce a surface uh, let's say a rectangular surface here and in rhino i'm going to just uh, use rebuild to use uh, rebuild to add the UNV count 30 and 30 and I'm going to use the soft edit surface here to uh, deform the surface so I'm going to use the soft edit surface select the surface and select a point here you can see that you can define the distance for the UV and remember you can fix the edges yes or no so if you just hit the uh, fix edges to yes it's going to connect it to the uh, start of the edge here and if you put it no, it's going to deform the surface. So I'm going to just deform this surface to show you uh, that you can use this on any freeform surface. Let's just zoom on the surface. And I'm going to bring this a little bit up to start the tutorial. Uh, first of all, we have to bring this into Grasshopper. So we can go to the Parms menu and use the Surface tool here. Uh, I'm going to put this here and put the Bifocals plugin so you can see the names. And I'm going to right click and set this to the surface. So just put this here and we can turn off the surface. Okay, to use the Launchbox plugin, if you go to the Launchbox uh, in the structure, uh, there is a space truss structure too. This is what I'm going to use in this Launchbox tutorial. So I'm going to select this space truss structure too. You have to give it two surfaces and it's going to produce the space frame between them. So I, if I just give this to the first surface, we have to make another surface on this. Use the project, uh, this one, which will project the surface or anything on the plane, onto a plane. So let's just do this, project onto a plane. And the default is the XY plane, as you can see here. And it's going to project this surface uh, onto the XY plane. Uh, now we can give this as the second surface and we're good to go. We can turn this off and uh, control the divisions U and V. Let's just start from 2 to maybe 6 and delete the number slider so it's going to get the U divisions and the V divisions. So we can control that. Let's increase that in the U and increase that in the V division. Okay, so now you can see that this structure, basically the space truss or the space frame is uh, uh, based on the surface or the freeform, uh, freeform surface we are using here. Okay, now what we want to do is to use these primary lines. I'm going to use a curve in the Parms menu to just show you what happens. The primary lines of this one is the top of the space frame. Let's just turn off the surface. You can see that's the top. Uh, layer of the space frame. Uh, the second one is the down and the bottom of it and the web lines is just here you can see that. Okay, I'm going to use the shift key to add all of that to the curve so we want to make those pipes and connections. As you can see here you can see that we have a connection and a pipe which is smaller of the length of the line. So let's just do this and if I just connect a pipe, let's just type pipe. You can find that in the surface section, freeform. If I give that to the curve, you can see that it's it has a radius. Let's just give this 1.2. That's the radius. And you can see that this is intersecting everywhere. So what we want to do is to define something for the uh, connection and make that pipe a little bit smaller. Uh, I'm going to use a technique here, which is making these lines basically uh, an offset or a length from the knots. We can go to the curve section, analyzes in the analyzes section. Here you can see, let's just go down. We have this 
evaluate length. Basically what it does is assume that this is a curve. We can say that we want to evaluate this length, which is whatever, maybe 20, let's say. We want like 2 meters from the start, so it's going to give us the point. And then we can reverse the curve in this direction and say again 2 from this one. And uh, in this particular example, because it's a line, we're going to connect these two points together to just shorten the curve. So remember, because it's a line, it's going to give us accurate results, evaluate length. The most important thing about evaluate length is uh, turn off the normalized. You can see by default it's true. It means that it's from 0 to 1. So uh, if you give this a length, you have to give smaller than 1 if you want to, but we don't need to normalize. It's 0 to 1. We just can right click on this and select the invert to just make that uh, false. You can just put that to false. OK. Now if I want to, I can say 1.25 maybe based on your project and here you can see that we are uh, putting a length from that line at the start okay again let's just turn everything off is to flip this curve to get at the start so I'm going to go to the curve utility and use this flip curve so let's just do that and flip this curve and again use this evaluate length control C control V and now you can see that it's going to be at the start and at the end and we can just control that that's it so let's just turn everything off and using this line with two points which is here in the curve section primitive we can connect these two set of points together and here it is so that's the technique you can use to find the distance from that nodes and make a pipe so let's just give this a pipe and we can control that later okay that's it and uh, now what I want to do is to also define a sphere at the nodes which is the points let's just give this uh, the nodes here and I'm going to go to the surface and select this sphere to create a sphere around that point base of the sphere and now we can just define the radius so let's just give that 1.5 maybe and based on your project you have to change these numbers and it's going to take a while if you want to make this faster a uh, quick trick you can use go to the mesh and use this mesh sphere if you want to it's in the primitive section mesh sphere and give that to the base and give that to the radius that's it let me just disable this you can see how fast it is if you want to show that in mesh so remember that's a mesh if I bake this you can see that these are segmented mesh so uh, it's based on the accuracy you want let's just turn that into nerves and go back okay the next part is to make the connection so what I want to do here is to make a cone which is sitting on this pipe and going into that center that's not really hard uh, there's a trick we can do here. I'm going to go to Curve Analyzes and select this perpendicular frame. That's going to give you a perpendicular frame. So perpendicular frame from this curve and the parameter here is this one. That means the location of the start. Okay. Uh, if I just go here, you can see that's the number it says. 0.12 that's basically the parameter that grasshopper use so it's 0 0.12 okay 0 0.12 and now we can give this parameter to here to make that perpendicular frame so that's the technique you can always use this evaluate length with perpendicular frame to extract those and again now we have to extract the flipped curve remember we have to give it at the end also so I'm going to flip this and give this parameter here, okay? So that's about the uh, flip side. Let's just see that's the flip side, and that's for the uh, start of the uh, of the line, okay? Now we have the frames, and we can put those cones sitting on those frames. Uh, let's go to the surface uh, primitive and use this cone thing. 
a base which is the exactly the plane we want to put the cone here right i'm going to give that with a shift key to the frames uh, the radius is, is exactly the radius of the pipe, so we're going to give that 0 0.9 to this radius. And the length is exactly the length we have evaluated here, so let's just give this number to the length. But as you can see, these cones are inwards, so what I want to do is to just go inside the length, right click expression, and minus six. Here we go. We have them inside the pipe. So now, if we want to exactly model this, it's going to uh, slow down the process. But you can go to the intersection and use this uh, solid difference if you want to. Just to show you the results, I'm going to uh, make a difference between these cones. And here we go. Let's just bring this here those spheres. Okay, so you can see it's going to take about one minute to produce the results. I'm going to bake this. It's going to take a while to produce that. Now you can see that we have these results and that's exactly the connection uh, we want to. If you need more details, uh, assume that this is the connection and this is the pipe coming inside. Okay, what we did was to produce something like this. But in reality, what you have to do is to also produce a bolt here, and then the pin comes in. So you have to, I'm going to give you just a tip for this. So now what you can do is to just make that sphere a little bit smaller, like this, and then extrude that in the normal direction. You can do that, and then connect that to the uh, sphere or the knot. So you can also just produce more details. I'm going to turn that off so you can just turn it on later. And now you can see it's not really hard to increase the uh, radius of those pop. It's going to change the results. And also what is important is we can increase the length here like this and we can produce the results. It's like the connection we have. And at the end we can give this a display uh, custom preview here to just color these things. Let's just turn everything off. And you can just give a swatch. I prefer to use this one because it just gives a color to it. Uh, visualize that also to show how the structure will be. That's not a really uh, structural optimization or anything for that, just a visualization of how the surface will affect the space frame form. So if I want to, let's just uh, bake this surface and show that's the base surface. I'm going to set this again to this one. Uh, we can just change that uh, by using the soft edit surface again. Maybe we want to just bring this up. So remember always you can uh, update the results and make a new space frame between the surface and the ground. And you can also change that height, bring it a little bit down, and produce new results. So that was the tutorial of using Launchbox in Grasshopper. You can see this is a little bit down, so I'm going to just uh, rotate this a little bit like this one and produce better results. You can just rotate, move, uh, or deform the surface to produce better results. Uh, that's it. That's the Launchbox tutorial of how you can make that. And Grasshopper, you can see it's really easy. Uh, thanks for watching. Remember to subscribe to our channel. And remember to like this video so YouTube will show you more uh, tutorials. And see you next time.